Welcome to the Auburn Medical Group YouTube live stream. The entertaining medical live stream where viewers can ask real-time questions of real medical doctors. And here are our hosts, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Dr. Gwen Vaughn. Welcome to the program, Auburn Medical Group, talking about blastomycosis, a fungal infection. Uh, Dr. Mark Vaughn here without Dr. Gwaine. Dr. Gwaine is not able to make it today, but he will be back next week. So we're going to have to go just with a live audience doing the chat and myself talking about this outbreak of, of uh, blastomycosis in Michigan this time. In the past, it was in Wisconsin, but that was decades ago, I believe. Uh, so we'll jump right into it. Uh, certainly those of you who have not seen this program before and we're coming because we're talking about blastomycosis, please be prepared that there may be some tomfoolery ahead of actually getting deep into the topic. You may want to fast forward into it because this is a live program with a regular audience that comes uh, and has a, a bit of a sense of community. Of course, if you don't usually get it, you can subscribe and turn on the, the uh, bell icon for the notification so you won't miss us in the future. Let's go ahead and look and see what we have so far. We have Rusty B just simply saying hi because we we do visit on the show. But getting back to, thank you Rusty, we appreciate that. Getting back to blastomycosis. So I'll show you here what we have on the, the news right now. Um, yeah, I just now noticed it says Microsoft Bing, don't, don't judge me. Okay, so fungal outbreak in Michigan. You've got uh, NBC, Fox, Forbes, and as it goes down, all, all oops, that's not what I want. As you go down, all, all the news outlets are, are getting on this and talking about this with one death now, uh, others hospitalized. They shut down a paper mill because apparently uh, everybody who's really sick from it and the, the person who died were somehow associated with this, this paper mill in uh, Michigan. Usually this blastomycosis, this fungal infection, this particular species is found in that part of the country, uh, around the river valleys like the Mississippi, Ohio, around the Great Leaks region. region. There, there's some water usually in the areas. Typically, historically, uh, you see it in middle-aged men who work outside or maybe have some kind of outdoor recreation where they're exposed to this, this fungus in the environment. Most often it's a pulmonary or a lung infection, but you can also get skin involvement, uh, less commonly bone or the genital urinary system or in people who are usually, if, if they're immune compromised, um, actually a meningitis from it. Uh, it is hard to diagnose. Um, it, th there's not an easy test for it. The, the slam dunk or, or gold standard way of diagnosing it is a culture where you grow it on a particular type of medium that you don't accidentally get it on there. You get it from somebody's sputum or you do some washings with a bronchoscope into the lungs. And they, it's not like other fungal infections where it's swirling around in the environment and, and, and you can get an accidental uh, showing of, of it. And it can take four weeks for this organism to actually start showing that it's growing on your culture four weeks before you have the official gold standard diagnosis telling you, oh yeah, that, that's what got you really sick and put you in the ICU four weeks ago. And so now we can confirm uh, what the right thing is to treat it with. Well, obviously we don't wait that long in cases like this. We come up with um, a, a treatment based on knowing that this is going around, it's been cultured from the environment, that people are having the same type of symptoms and are in the same geographic area. So you go ahead and start them on the treatment. A treatment that can take six months, sometimes even a year, depending on the, the host or the patient, especially if they're immune compromised. In fact, some people who uh, are taking certain medicines for problems like they've had a transplant or they have other health issues that require them to take these medicines that tone down the activity of the immune system, they'll have to take these medicines for months and months and months uh, when there's been an outbreak or when they've gotten over having their own infection from it. So blastomycosis, let's go to the, go to the comments here from, from our viewers who are watching live right now. And, and we do have some, some people here. We have uh, already, we talked about Rusty, and, and he, of course, has given us uh, 
thumbs up there. And then Lindsay Antoine is here. Thank you, Lindsay, for uh, participating in the show. Uh, it, it's like the last of a... Okay. Thank you, Lindsay, for... It's, it's like I have a co-host right here saying what I need when I need it. Thank you, Lindsay. That's exactly right. It is like um, The Last of Us. And, and so we're going to be t coming back to that because uh, my son had mentioned The Last of Us a week or two ago. And so I watched the first episode. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Thank you. That, that is part of the reason that I, I made this the topic because that's a popular show on streaming services right now. And then also uh, Rusty B., uh, Bronco scope can take a sample of it. If so, of what washings? You just take some saline, squirt it in the into the 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 bronchus, suck it back out with a scope, and then put that on the the culture medium and see what grows. Um, you can also get sputum, although it's not as definitive. And in fact, some of these um, the percentage of of success at getting the the diagnosis is surprisingly low, uh, which is why you would even bother with a a culture that takes weeks um, to get the answer. Yeah, tough one. So it, it's diagnosed a little different. Now there are some typical appearances on chest X-ray or on CAT scan uh, if those are used to to look at a person who is sick with these symptoms. Um, sort of a typical appearance. And then, of course, if you can get the organism and see what it looks like, it's got a typical appearance under a microscope, but that's hard to do. It's really hard to do uh, with this organism because, you know, how often do you hear about an outbreak of it? And it's only in certain parts of the country. So hard to get a hold of it. Thankfully, it doesn't look like it's contagious. So that's a good thing. But for those people who live around this paper mill, of course, it's very concerning. So the CDC is there. They have their emergency team evaluating and trying to see what the source of it is, where it is, and, and why it happened, how to get rid of it so that people can safely go back to work, uh, and also so that it doesn't happen again in the future. So these are a lot of questions that are trying to be answered right now in Michigan. Um, forgot the name of the, the town, but I remember it rhymes with the Dutch Brothers drink I had last week, which was a uh, manganata. I should be able to see it right now. Escanaba. Yes, Escanaba, Michigan. The drink was manganata. Escanaba, Michigan is the, the town. So we'll try to keep those two straight. Um, you're not going to get a disease from having that new drink at Dutch Brothers. That's that's the bottom line there. Okay, let's get back to the comments because we have a, a live chat going here with Beth saying hello from Lake Charles and Elsie can do uh, asking if former COVID patients are more likely to contract this infection. I have no knowledge of that being a problem uh, unless the COVID uh, had such an impact on them that it's affecting, uh, you know, maybe scarred their lungs or they're still having trouble getting back to their full immunity after having COVID. That's a possibility, but not just because they had COVID. And then Rusty uh, coming, uh, oh, saying hi, Beth uh, from Shreveport. I guess that's somebody that Rusty knows or Beth. Oh, oh, she's from Lake Charles, and I, I guess Rusty is from Shreveport. But getting, thank you for you, Louisiana folks, for being a part of the program. We're glad that you get us all the way over in, is that Eastern or Central time zone? Anyway, thank you for staying up so, so late, a couple hours later than us, and watching. So we're getting back to the last of us. Thank you, Lindsay Antoine. Lindsay Antoine pointing out that this is uh, like the last of us. So I really, it really got my attention, the last of us, when I first heard about it, uh, because the way the show starts, and I'm not, I'm, this isn't a horrible um, a spoiler. You know, if, if you say, oh, I want to watch this, I don't want to know anything. Okay, if you don't want to know anything at all about the show and you plan on watching it, come back and watch this show later. I'm not going to do a whole bit, a lot of spoiler because I've only seen the first episode and, um, and the stuff I'm talking about is kind of the exposition for the show rather than the story. So can, can, I, can I do that much? Can I just do the exposition that the show does for you anyway? So the, the, the guy starts out saying that in the uh, 1960s, is that what it was, uh, Lindsay, 1960s, I think, there, there was um, this guy giving a lecture about these ants that are infected with a fungus that has a neurotransmitter. And I believe this is an actual real thing. I, I think I remember learning about this in medical school, I think it was, uh, some fungus that's able to alter the behavior of ants to make them 
uh, ideal hosts for the fungus to live off of as they actually, I, I, I think this is correct, I think they get their sustenance from the ants they're infecting, you know, like a, like a bacteria would, um, but also alter their behavior, you know, what, 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 what their central nervous system is doing. So just a fascinating concept. And, and so the idea is uh, th these guys are having a, a show on television where they're talking about threats, uh, future threats, biologic, I guess, in this case. And, and one of the uh, s experts on the show says that, and this is back in the 60s, I think, that his concern for a threat for mankind is uh, a fungus like this being able to live in humans. And then there's some things that are thrown out, like, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Lindsay, that there's no treatment for fungal infections, but the only reason we don't get them is because the human body uh, is so hot. But if climate change occurred and the environment got hotter, then the human body would be an environment they could live in because they would adapt to the, the warm environment of, of the, the warming up world. Okay. Uh, Let's back up on that because, yes, we have treatments for fungal infections. Yes, there are many fungal infections. Um, to my knowledge, there aren't any that alter neurochemistry with neurotransmitter. Uh, well, hold on. Let's make this interesting. Um, the Salem Witch Trials and strange behavior in people who were... Um, who were thought to be um, practicing witchcraft that has been attributed to an LSD-like chemical from a fungal infection in grain uh, around that time. I, I'm sorry, the names are escaping me now. I, I, I didn't go over that in my prep for the show. What, uh, if it comes to me, I'll say it. But if, if one of you looks it up, go ahead and put it in the chat for me. That'd be handy. So that, that would be an example of human behavior being altered by uh, a fungus. But, but it isn't in a way that especially benefits the fungus. And it's not as dramatic as what they're showing uh, for the premise uh, in the show as, as something happens. And I haven't said what happens. No spoilers with that. I was just saying what the background was that you need to find the show to be interesting. Um, and I actually don't even know if I'm going to watch a second episode. Maybe, maybe uh, Lindsay has, and she can, she can give us some insight into that. Okay, getting back to our, our comments, uh, Lindsay's saying it is a real thing. They're basically zombie ants. Lots of love. Yes, of course. Uh, yep, that's it in a nutshell. Okay, thank you. And, and Elsie is talking about the wheat. Yes, yeah, it was uh, something in the grain was growing. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. The the, the word for um, ergot. There you go. Ergotamines were, uh, ergotamines uh, have um, action in the brain like neurotransmitters, and they're coming from the ergot that was in the the wheat fields um, in you know Massachusetts, uh, eastern Massachusetts in the what late 1600s, I guess it was. So that that's kind of a, a, a real version of fungi fun, fungi having effect on human behavior, but. Um, I don't know of that causing significant invasive infections like this blastomycosis, where if, if you're immune compromised, it, you know, it can start growing, growing these, uh, these lesions that can have pus coming out of them. They can look like big old warts or, <coughs> excuse me, or even cancers on the skin is what they resemble. And, uh, but the most common is the respiratory infection, which resembles a pneumonia. And so oftentimes patient, patients with uh, fungal infection, I think about what we have out here, the so-called valley fever, which I think is coccidiomycosis. Again, I should have looked it up before the show to remind myself. We don't see it here all that often, except for we'll see it in a lot of adult patients. They'll have these uh, scarring in their lungs that's left over from early in life when they had valley fever, uh, San Joaquin Valley or uh, or the valley in Dry Valley in um Arizona is where you'll see that fungal infection. So it's, it's kind of funny. These, these fungal infections are very region specific because they're coming from something in the environment rather than from being contagious from person to person. So it looks like uh, either an acute pneumonia when it first happens or a chronic pneumonia that's going on for weeks. And, and oftentimes we will send patients off for evaluation when they have 
some kind of, uh, uh, it looks like it was a pneumonia, or they have this uh, chronic pneumonia-like picture, and we get a chest x-ray, it doesn't look like a classic pneumonia picture, or, or maybe we don't even see something, um, or, or they're treated with antibiotics because it really looked clinically like they had pneumonia, but the symptoms just keep going. And we will refer to a pulmonologist because they are the ones that do the workup for these, these fungal infections. You know, I, I don't do a whole lot of workups uh, in my role here in primary care for lung fungal infections, but I do know that that's something that needs to be thought of if they're not getting better from the typical treatment. And of course, if they're having very severe symptoms, if, if they're having um, cr uh, critical illness or something like that, we just get them to the emergency department where they can get intervention uh, quickly to address what's going on right then and now with oxygenation and ventilation. And then testing can be done uh, to find out a more specific treatment that's appropriate for them. But yeah, in a setting of this known blastomycosis uh, outbreak going on, they know that when somebody has this, and they have the right symptoms, and they have the right proximity to ground zero, that paper mill, start the antifungals. Don't, don't wait for a definitive diagnosis. Okay, so let's go back to our chat. And Lindsay says, if you haven't seen the show, it's, I'm sorry, there's a thing blocking the, the word there to say outstanding. Uh, highly recommend. Well, I, I hope it gets better after the first episode because I, I didn't find it all that compelling. You'll have to let me know um, what what you thought after the first episode because that's as far as I got. And my, my son, uh, he, he finds it interesting too. Um, but of course, he liked Walking Dead, so <laughs> maybe Lindsay did also. Um, back to, okay, Lindsay did come. No, it was Elsie Candu says, uh, Lindsay, have you seen Fungus episode, our Planet Nature series? I show it to my students when we study fungus. That sounds like an interesting show, too, that talks about fungus, because they are absolutely fascinating. My wife read a book about uh, fungus, and it was quite interesting. So with that, again, I apologize. Dr. Gwen's not here. Otherwise, there'd be a lot more dialogue, but it's still a good show, and you'll still like it, and you'll still do super chats and, and all of that. But until next time, Dr. Mark Vaughn and Lindsay Antwine, who is our special patron, uh, telling you to come back next time and to stay in good health. Doctors, thank you for another informative session. Auburn Medical Group is located in Auburn, California, USA. Thank you for participating. Please tell a friend and join us again next week.